get tabs and backing tracks for this lesson for practice if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. Briefly, I will talk about my equipment. This is an early 2000s Epiphone Emperor Regent, big hollow body jazz guitar stock pickup, bass cut switch installed after the fact to scoop out some of the thumpies. And going into my board, using my Strymon Deco for a little bit of compression. Strymon Flint for a little bit of reverb. Going into my Silvertone 1484. Thank you to Rode Microphones for helping me out with this beautiful NTR ribbon microphone. Old shoes and picture postcards, Tom Waits. Essential chord progression is I'm G, and then I'm C, and a G, a G, a G, and a D, and a G, and a C, and a G, and a C. And a G, and a D, and a G, D. That's our main chord progression for basically the whole song. Notice this song is in three, four times, so I am, you know, at, at default setting should be a one, two, and three, one, two, and three, C, two, and three, G, two, and three, C, uh, G, two, and three, G, two, and three, D. Be my recommendation for just practicing the rhythm first because you want to learn the rhythm to any song before you do anything fancy because that's kind of the the skeleton that the the um, whole thing lives on now let's talk about my arrangement you've seen other of my videos, I'm a huge Gillian Welch and Dave Rawlings fan, um, and so a lot of my playing, you know, some of, some of his style might creep in. So let's look. Uh, so I cop the verse melody as best I can. We got a zero, three, three, two, oh, which is just a G arpeggio, which actually ends up being Tom's vocal melody. Then I grab a C chord, do a little hammer on. I said, the time it was sung. So that's a little C action. Zero, two, G. Now notice that G there. I don't do this G very often, if at all, ever. I tend to do at, you know, rooted in this G, which is the same G, but with fingers two, three, and four, as opposed to fingers one, two, and three. Just observe the hand angle. So much easier to get to other chords and easier to do little fiddly bits with the other fingers if you get used to this one. So side note, I would highly recommend getting used to this G if you can. Uh, where was I? I'm singing the song, time it was sung. That's just A, B, and that's zero and zero on B and B, a little slide back, three, two, oh on G. And that's just staying on G. B, B, and then that's a D power chord, zero and two. O, two, G, again getting that third up there. So to do arrangements like this, um, you do want to be very careful about where your right hand is going um, because if I'm not precise I go past the melody and I, I miss it. Um, yes, so that is my point. Where am I? Uh, okay, but it's hard and then oh oh and now the chord changes to C. That's a little tricky one. I, I'm using my middle finger for that three, my pointer finger to get that hammer on. The squishy little fat part of my finger blocks this D string to give me that sound. Two more of those, and then... Yeah, that's so that passage... But it's... That's weird because Tom actually hits a weird vocal note on that C. He does hit a... It's not quite right. 
Um, but it's not quite wrong. It's Tom Waits. So that line again. our verse. Um, I'll play it all slow. to three and four and then you're going to go back out of it but it's interesting the harmony sung by uh, the, the, the other guy on the song is Shep Cook he's the guy who plays the, the cool guitar solo too he stays on that C note again and then a little two oh three Look at that. Uh, but goodbye, so long the road calls me dear. Oh, yeah. And your tears cannot find me anymore. There it is. Uh, 203, 230, 40, D chord. And then, and farewell. Does that again. And then it's a little different. the sun in her hair yeah so that little melody oh two zero zero that's G two three two oh which is just a C and then and I kiss you and then I'll be gone so that is two oh three two three oh two four zero so that chorus solo. Uh, yeah, I love this little solo. Um, very tastefully played little acoustic guitar solo. Let's look at it. Again, it's fitting over the same structure that the whole song is fitting over. Okay, let's break it down because it's really interesting. A, it's down low. I love stuff that's in the open position because as guitar players, we forget that we can play neat stuff down here. We really want to play as you know primarily a rock player that's like what we've been conditioned to look for I, you know it's really cool to stay down low and see what's there and this is really well playing to the changes of the song which is also something as rock players we don't do as much so we start with 003 it's a G chord great little simple pentatonic major pentatonic thing Slide to that four. That's the first lick. The song changes to C. Shep Cook changes to C. Great little like, yeah, boom, right on it. O two O one O O two O. So I would even if I, it was me practicing, I would just taken those. Next lick, O two O. That's just the connector. Back to a G chord. Great lick for this style of like folksy, but by well, here, let me show you it first. Middle finger, my favorite fingers, two to four. Pointer finger gets that three on the on the B string, and then back out of it. 
back up it. So that lick sounds great on a G. But guess what? That lick also sounds good in E blues. That's one of those very classic guitar licks that um, if you don't know it, go ahead and know it. It's really useful. Good job, Eric. And then, in a, a fashion that is very clever, Shep Cook just takes the same idea and the song changes to D, so he takes the lick and moves it up to D. So clever. So that's just two on the D string now sliding to four. Pointer finger is going to have to get this two back here and back out of it. So the whole first half of the solo. Great little finger exercise. Let's go ahead and move on. Again, little fill notes, O, two, O. That's a great little, I mean, to my ear, that's like a, I don't know, I think of that as like a country, like, like a Telecaster thing, but that, because that's when I learned that, but I guess it works on acoustics too. Two, four, flatten out for the threes. Land on this five, because the song is going to C. Oh, look at that. There's a C bar chord right there. Very, I mean, he is on point with the playing to changes. Uh, that lick again. And then, staying on point to the changes goes to a G inversion up here. That's seven, seven, eight, seven. You know, it's a D chord shape. But, you know, G inversion, inversion. That's where he got that. And then there's a C chord right here. That's a really cool thing. You hybrid pick it. You get your flat at the sevens, and then you're going to hammer on to nine on the G, eight on the E. Very cool. Let me do that whole line again. G major run. Am I right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I just had a brain spasm. So that he just actually does 7, 10, 8, 10, 7. That's still. Still have G major. And then he does it. Oh, I guess that makes sense because there's a D chord there. So he plays. There's a D bar chord. 5, 5, or five 7, 7, 7, 5. So he gets a 7 on that um, G and a 5 on the high E, backs up, which is really a G sus4, 5, 3, 3, resolving to, hey look at that, there's a G chord shape. And he does a quick little 5 and 5, which is really implying a C chord, we won't really worry about it, and then a, a D, which is you know, with no third up on top, just O, two, three. So that second half of the solo. Wait, um. The little run. Great solo to work on too, and yeah, great education and how to play to, to G, C, and D in ways that aren't just. Which, you know, that sounds good too, but it's really nice to, to see people play to changes. That's kind of, you know, um, something that I work on a lot, something that all of us work on a lot, trying to be able to shape our melodies around the chords that are going on in the song as they're happening. I think that is all that I need to tell you about this song. I hope that's helpful for you. Thanks so much for watching.